Now we're going to take a look at what's called the melonic ester synthesis. And it's called the melonic ester synthesis because it always starts off with melonic ester as your reactant. Uh, and it's an example of what we call a template synthesis. So in this case, you always end up with the same product with a, just a little bit different variation. So in this case, we're always going to end up with some form of substituted acetic acid. So you're always going to have this part of the molecule. The question is, and you've got an option, is you can add an R group to that alpha carbon or potentially two R groups to that alpha carbon. They can be the same two or they could be two different ones. Uh, as long as they can be added in an SN2 reaction, uh, i.e. they're not tertiary and, and generally secondaries aren't the greatest either. Uh, but that's kind of the way it works uh, for this template synthesis. This is going to be the first of two template synthesis we use. So in this case, we've got an alpha carbon that's very acidic here, being uh, alpha to both carbonyls here. And with esters, the base you use to deprotonate the alpha carbon is the same as the leaving group. So we're going to use sodium ethoxide in step one. And we deprotonate the alpha carbon. You can only pull off one of those hydrogens at a time. So once you've pulled off one of them and given a negative charge, the other one is way less acidic at that point. So you can't pull them both off at the same time. But you form this enolate ion. So And then you react it with your first alkyl halide. Uh, and in this case, as long as that alkyl halide is good substrate for SN2, that's the key here. So, and now we will have replaced that hydrogen that was originally there right here with that first R group. And then we do the same sequence of steps over again. So we'll add sodium ethoxide again in step three. That'll deprotonate the other H, and then we'll add another alkyl halide to replace that H. So in this case, we're going to get rid of this H and add that second R group here. Cool, getting us here. And we have the option, we don't actually have to replace both H's. We could just replace one of the two. It's our choice. Uh, and then from here on out, we're going to add some H3O plus and then heat it up. And we've got to realize that we've got esters here and any carboxylic acid derivative, including the esters, will turn into carboxylic acids when you add H3O+. So in this case, our molecule is going to turn into a dicarboxylic acid. So looking like this. And we have to realize that the carboxylic acids here are beta to each other. And we're also heating this, keep in mind. And so as we add heat, again, any carboxylic acid that has a carbonyl at the beta position will decarboxylate. Well, in this case, they're beta to each other, and we just get to pick to have one of them leave under beta decarboxylation. And I'm going to choose this one, and it's simply just going to leave a CO2, and that's going to leave us with our product, as well as, obviously, the CO2. Uh, so it kind of looks like magic how you get to the end here, but the first thing that happens is you just do hydrolysis of both esters, and then beta decarboxylation takes place, leaving you with just this carboxylic acid uh, where you've added two different substituents to it.